adding this new section like two and a half years after the original. Why would I come back to bother with this? The reason is because I wanted to give you some explanation, not just, okay, well, this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like algebraically, but what it looks like conceptually. Like, well, how do I know? I mean, a lot of the new math stuff, which is the same as the old math stuff, by the way. It's just uh, the way that a lot of people are assessing this is different than they used to. Uh, they're not just looking at the graph. They want to know based on uh, quote-unquote real-world situations, which are usually uh, perfectly aligned into matching the exact goal of the question, which means they're not really real-world all that much. Um, focus on just words. Well, how am I supposed to know then? So going back to here, we're looking at from we're looking at a table perspective. You'll notice that the common difference uh, is a big part of it when I'm dealing with a linear relationship. Exponential, there's a common ratio. and quadratic, I'm dealing with second difference. But what does that really mean in the end of all things? In general, uh, we need to talk about what makes a function. Now, when you have a function, obviously there's the mathematical definition where each input has its own individual output. But in once we get into, quote unquote, the real world, whatever, um, we're dealing with a function is really a consistent relationship. There's some sort of driving factor into consistency and there's some sort of driving factor into there being a relationship. So if I'm buying shirts for instance, if I buy one shirt it's thirty dollars, two shirts is sixty dollars, three shirts is ninety, four is one twenty, blah blah blah. Well obviously it's just y is equal to 30 times x, where x is the number of shirts. That's all fine and dandy, but what's really going on? You'll notice that each time I'm going up by 30, 30, 30. That's what truly defines the idea of a linear relationship. The concept here of con what is consistent is the common difference. It's what I'm adding or subtracting every time, over and over and over again. This 30, the common difference, is the driving factor to the type of change. That's what's consistent, uh, the common difference in terms of change. Now, what about the relationship that's being built? Well, the relationship here is based on addition. It could also be based on subtraction, but I think we can both agree however many there are of you, uh, among us, between us, depending, um, that the relationship being addition could, I mean, subtraction could just be adding negatives. So we're going to say that the relationship is sort of an add-subtract relationship with a common difference being the consistent factor. If I know those parts, then I really have a feel for that function. If I change this into, you have to make the same exact car payment every month, $300, that's how you budget it. Well, in the real world, it doesn't work that way, but that's what you budget out, so that makes a lot of sense. So 300, 300, 300, 300. It's consistently adding in terms of how much you've put away or how much you've spent on it. You've added the same amount every time, and that amount is your common difference. Now for a quadratic, we may, I'll just do the most generic one, which is this. This is the parent function. One, two, three, four. So I have one, four, nine, sixteen. And then I start to do this. That's the ugliest sixteen I've written in a long time. So good on me. Uh, five, and then this is seven. Uh, three and five here would be two. Five and seven would be two. So what's the relationship? It's the same as it is for a linear relationship. It's addition, because I'm just adding that value. Or again, you could always be subtracting, depending. The consistency is the part that changes. What's consistent about that relationship? Uh, the second difference. If you hit a golf ball in the air, it does this. It looks like it's going up a lot and then it kind of flops back down. Well, you'll see that the relationship here is really uh, based on second differences. That's how it works. So that's the consistency part of a quadratic relationship is you're looking for something with a second difference. Or you might, generally in the real world scenarios, they will have a set of things that they generally fall into. Uh, rockets shooting straight up and down, throwing a ball that goes into perfect parabola, which never happens because um, there's lots of other things involved. Uh, but 
those are those are your big things, and then a golf shot that goes straight up and down, and then uh, maybe even a bridge, like if it has this sort of arch to it. Those are the things that would clue you in that it's probably quadratic. But if you can get the data, look for second differences. And it should be a consistent addition slash subtraction of that relationship. That's what defines a quadratic function. Now exponentials in its own little uh, it's got its own little thing going on. So say I'm doing a, a reasonable example would be say I'm doing uh, I start with a principal value of 100 and I want to increase by 10% each year. I was going to write add there. Per year. Or you could say each year, whatever. So having this set up, what this ends up looking like is this. 100 and I'm going to multiply it by 10%, but I also have to multiply it by itself. When I have an increase amount, I want to multiply the 100 times 1, so I'm adding on to that starting point, and then plus 10%. And because it's per year, I don't have to break it down. This isn't a really a heavy compound interest style problem, so 0 0.1. And then it would be x. That's why it's an exponential, because it has an exponent to it. So what does that look like? So f of 1. I have 100 times 1 plus uh, 0.1. So I'm actually going to break that up into parts really fast. So in this case, uh, 100 is, of course, 100 plus 10% uh, of 100 is 10. So that gives me 100. And 10. The thing about it is you start out with that 110 in the second year. So f of 2, your new value is actually 110. And then you'll take 10% of that. And here's where the trick comes in. 110 times 0.1 is not the same thing as 100 times 0.1. It's 11. So you get 110 plus 11. That's the difference. It's not based on the consistent amount each time. The real consistency is in the relationship itself. So let's look at what that relationship is. The relationship in an exponential function is, of course, multiply. Or you can say divide, but that's just multiplying fractions. So that's the big difference. It'll go up each time, but it's a multiply relationship, or it's based on the relationship. And the consistency, so I, I meant to put another consistent, but I forgot apparently, and I'm too lazy to go back and fix it. Welcome to my life. The consistency is the base of the relationship. Unlike over here, where the consistency is the actual number that you're putting in, 30, 30, 30 is the common difference. Here, the second difference, so if you can apply that back and get back to it, it's consistent over and over again, just that relationship. But in this case, the base of the relationship is the same. The real consistent component of the exponential is 10%. And if you have something that's like, it does it seven, uh, it triples or it doubles or it's seven times itself each year. That would just be doubles would be 200%, triples would be 300%, and seven times itself each year is 700%. So it's consistent. So the base of the relationship, this 10%, is the really consistent part of the exponential relationship as opposed to having the same number added over and over. That's why you get this. This kind of looks like this because it's going up by the same amount every time. Whereas this one starts out just a little bit and then all of a sudden just shoots up. Even sharper than this one would if you're only looking at the first quadrant. So I'd have this and it would go up. Be a little bit less steep than this, which just goes straight up. So that's the key difference in quote unquote real world scenarios. Linear relationships or linear functions will have sort of a uh, a common difference consistency. Look for an addition relationship. If you add the same amount over and over, 
I buy another one, I get I pay the same amount. I buy another one, I get the same amount. That's a linear relationship. If you start to see second difference relationships or you hear one of the common catchphrases like um, rocketry or it makes an arc, you're probably looking at a quadratic relationship. For exponential, look for things where you have to multiply to get the answer. Twice something's value is two times that value. A percentage requires that you multiply. So look for something that has that relationship and that the base of the relationship is consistent. 10% of a value doesn't mean it's always going to give you the same number as shown here. 100 times 10% is 10. 110, which changed everything, uh, times 0.1 is 11. These are not consistent values. They're not the same thing. But the relationship is the base of the consistency. So the 10% is the value that you kind of hitch your wagon to a little bit, as you, or hitch your star to, I guess, in this case. So there's your big difference between those things. I hope this, even though it made it way longer, uh, this addition to the original story helps to sort of clear some of that stuff up.